as the name suggests, and in fact Ignatius thought of it that way, that just as you have exercises for the body to strengthen the body and let's say mental exercises like puzzles or sudoku to strengthen the mind, that there are spiritual exercises to help you grow spiritually. A small little book, you could read it in two hours. It's like you could read the rules of the road in two hours, I suppose, but to, to pass your driving license means you've, you've got to learn how to drive. I would characterize the spiritual exercises as a prayer that gives one the sensitivity to recognize what God's will is, and then helps one find the internal freedom to be able to respond to whatever that will is. It took Ignatius many, many years to put together his own experiences in a systematic way from, from A to Z, if you like. So it's 30 days of quite intensive prayer, reflection, nearly entirely in silence. No radio, no TV, no social media. Um, silence itself allows you to, to be attentive, to listen to what's going on within yourself. You would generally only speak to one person, and that's your retreat director, to tell him about the experiences that you're having. And it is a, a quite a, a structured process of prayer, primarily based around the life of Jesus. And he organized the spiritual exercises together uh, into a kind of 30-day structured program. So th the way I think of it is like a spiritual boot camp. They're divided into what he calls weeks. They're not seven-day weeks. He, he uses the word week as, as a measurement of time. So we have four weeks. The first week basically is about our need and the need of the human race for healing, for forgiveness, for allowing God to transform us and to transform the world. Uh, it's really to situate ourselves and recognize the reality we're in. And that also involves recognizing our limitations and our sinfulness. In the second week, um, there's a really hopeful turn in the exercises where we look at who Christ was, how Jesus acted in the Gospels, and really get to know him as a friend. So we spend, again, five hours each day, well spaced out, meditating and praying on various passages of Scripture to know who Jesus is, what he's on about, how he attracts us, how he challenges us. And just bit by bit, the, the grace we're looking for is to know and love and serve him in all things. And then we decide, yes, I want, I want to follow him. I want to commit myself to him. Okay, if you do, then the third week will challenge you. Are you ready to, 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 to go to the cross with him? Are you ready to suffer indignities, humiliations, all of this? So we spend some days meditating and praying and feeling what's going on here when he's being arrested, when he's being insulted, when he's being crucified, all of that. Am I ready to follow him um, with all the challenges and the pain and all of that 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 demands? But that eventually, uh, as we all know in the Christian story, leads to the fourth week in the resurrection. And this is... Uh, a moment in which we try and really recognize God's action, God's presence, and God's love for the world. And uh, I think by, by the end of, of that sort of long period of prayer, um, one really finds a, an intimacy in relationship with God. Coming out of the exercises, the hope is that, uh, and for most people it does happen, that we are transformed in our relationship to, to God, to other people, and to the world itself.